Um, each week at this time, we do something called a community moment, where someone from the Oasis community gets up and shares kind of a thought for the day. Um, and it can be anything. We've had a variety of uh, topics covered during the community moments. And if you'd like to be on the list uh, to do one, just get with me. Send me an email, mike at houstonoasis.org, and we'll get you signed up. Uh, we're now scheduling into May for community moments. We've got a lot of good ones coming up. Uh, today, we're going to turn it over to Brian Schrock and Brian Bird. I think this might be the first time we've each uh, kind of a duo doing a community moment. So this is a new thing for us. Let's give a warm welcome to Brian and Brian. Test, test, test. Hey everyone. Is it on? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a great tie-in. Uh, shaky ground. Um, so yeah, uh, I am Brian with an I. This is Brian with a Y. Mine's spelled right. Uh, the controversy still continues. Um, to tie this in to Oasis, uh, I thought I'd just um, bring up another college course called Philosophy 101, which I think uh, you hear a lot of rumors about philosophy being that college course where a lot of people get reasoned or debated out of their faith. Um, but I'd like to make a plug for geoscience because it's the course that wonders you out of your faith. So, you know, if you were raised religious like we both were, um, these supernatural wonders were always told about, floods, Noah's Ark, that kind of thing. You take a Geology 101 course and suddenly it's replaced with, you know, continents rifting apart, slamming back into each other, volcanoes erupting, and it's, once you actually get out there and see it in person, it's, you know, it's hard to all of a sudden that supernatural stuff just doesn't compete. So, and what better place to actually see all these things than in Texas, believe it or not. And where we're gonna be talking about is Big Bend National Park. So, Austin, San Antonio over here. Big Bend is in this Big Bend of the Rio Grande. And we're gonna go over the geologic history. I'll start with the early history and uh, Brian with a Y is going to finish with our later history. So we're gonna start with the Proterozoic. And there's gonna be a lot of terms in here that you might be unfamiliar with. So I'm gonna try and relate it uh, to something that might help everyone, not just the geologists. Um, the Proterozoic is the oldest uh, part of Earth's history. This is before we see animals, especially complex animals. There are some asterisks you can kind of put in there, but this is the earliest little cellular life is kind of forming at the end of this period. And at the time, North America and South America are connected as one continent. Um, they begin rifting apart right at the end of the Proterozoic. And if you go to Big Bend today, you won't see any rocks uh, from this time period. So why am I talking about it? Um, well, that rifting happened right under Big Bend. Uh, you can see Texas, or at least where Texas would be today, uh, had a giant continental separation right there. Um, so yeah, not visible on the surface, but that crustal weakening when that continents rifted apart kind of helped drive a lot of the features we see there today. So let's skip ahead to what we can see from the surface, the Paleozoic. This is your trilobites, your crinoids, they're around in this time period, but way before dinosaurs still. So the marathon orogeny, what's an orogeny? It's a dirty sounding word, but it's basically you've got two continents colliding together and it's a mountain building event. So, yeah, it, it fits. It fits. It's easy to remember. So your marathon orogeny, this is, um, this is happening in the early Paleozoic. If you look on the map here, this right here, it says Wachita orogenic belt. The marathon's kind of this end of it. Uh, the Appalachians over here. This is the formation of Pangaea. So everything is coming this direction and slamming into the kind of center of North America here. Um, and that did form a mountain range right through Texas. So if you've seen the great Texas mountain range, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's kind of those big mountains right outside Austin. No. Yeah, they're, they're not there anymore. They've been eroded away. The Appalachians kind of stood the test of time, but the uh, Wachita Mountains didn't really. You can still see in the Ozarks, they're still visible there. And in Big Bend National Park, uh, you can still see little remnants. There's one, it's cute. Um, this is a picture I took uh, when I was at Big Bend a few years ago. 
And this is one I found on the internet that just happened to be just like the one I took, which I was kind of impressed by. But, um, so if you look in between layer B and C on this map, that's an Ordovician age rock. Uh, and below it, you'll see that Tezanus rock, it's from the Mississippian. Well, the Ordovician is older than the Mississippian, so what's it doing on top of a Mississippian age rock? Well, during those continental collisions, that mountain building event, older rock got thrust above younger rock, and that's uh, one of our evidences for Big Ben's formation during a mountain building event, <coughs> is seeing younger rocks thrust on top of older rocks. Um, so where can you see those little tiny mountains? These little itty bitty dots that have the arrows pointing to them up here, those are the only place in Big Bend you can see rocks from the Paleozoic. So yeah, they're very tiny mountains, but they are there. Everything else is newer in age. And Brian Bird's gonna actually talk about that later. Inside that red box is the Chisos Mountains, which are kind of that scenic view of Big Bend that most people know. Um, so, more rifting. After the Paleozoic, this is getting towards the late Triassic to Cretaceous. This is dinosaur time. Um, this is, those two, that Pangaea that slammed together back in the Paleozoic has now opened up again and rifted apart. And this is the Gulf of Mexico opening up. At that time, Big Bend, if you see it up on the map, is a shallow sea, that's a cross section there. And right next to it is the Chihuahua Trough. It's uh, bigger than a Chihuahua. <laughs> um, during this Cretaceous period, that trough uh, is filling up with uh, sediments, so sandstones, uh, limestones, and uh, today in the park, now that the water level has receded, you can see those thick layers, as well as the limestones that are forming in the shallow sea on the Diablo platform where Big Bend National Park is. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who's going to talk about the next orogeny. <laughs> Okay, now we come to the Laramide orogeny. It's yet another mountain building event that affected uh, um, uh, the collision um, that built the Rocky Mountains, further building the Rocky Mountains, but it had a traumatic effect to Big Bang National Park as well. It occurred during the late Cretaceous into the early tertiary, probably 70 to 50 million years ago. And this, of course, uh, marked it uh, somewhere in between there is when the dinosaurs went extinct. Um, this was actually the most active um, period for tectonism in the park, and it created a lot of the major features that you see there. Um, the Mesa de Angula monocline, the Sierra del Carmen, Santiago Mountains, and the Torneo Basin, uh, which you can see here in this kind of cartoon, which uh, shows your Santiago uh, uh, Mountains here, and the monocline over here. Now, when we say monocline, what we mean is um, basically when you got rocks that are being folded, um, I'll let him illustrate. We call an anticline where the rocks get folded upwards like this, and then we call a syncline when they get folded downwards like this, and the monocline basically just shows one limb, and you got a higher end and a lower end on the other side. And that's what you can see right over here when you're in the park. <laughs> okay, who knew we had volcanoes in Texas? Yeah, we got some volcanoes in Texas, <laughs> believe it or not. They don't work anymore, but and that might be a good thing. <laughs> but these occurred around 46 to 28 million years ago, and uh, it's basically further um, uh, caused by the subduction of the Farallon Plate um, that was next to the Pacific Plate, subducting up underneath the North American continent. Um, uh, and the oldest volcanics uh, produced the Chizos Mountain Group, which is around 46 to 33 million years old. And the sources for these volcanics are kind of poorly known because it's kind of a mix of volcanic classics and other things, and they can't quite pinpoint where the centers are. So if there's any future geologists out there, this might be a cool problem to try to figure out. Okay, and also the Pine Canyon Caldera Complex, you know, came into existence around 32 million years ago. And here we can see the Pine Canyon Caldera, and basically a caldera is just a collapsed volcano. There's you know, like a magma dome up underneath or a magma chamber up underneath a volcano, and you got a volcanic <coughs> pipe in the center. And if the overburden of the rocks gets too heavy, it'll just collapse in on itself. And you can kind of see that here where the rim of the caldera is kind of at these ridges in the foreground. And what the remnants of that volcanic pipe are right here. And uh, this is a rhyolitic rock outcrop. And um, a rhyolite is basically just like a granite. It's got the same chemical composition as a granite, except granites cool very slowly in the subsurface and form nice big crystals. <laughs> A rhyolite's basically the same thing, um, except you don't get big crystals that cool too fast. And this is just kind of a cartoon to illustrate the, 
subduction of the Farallon Plate up underneath the, uh, uh, the western edge of the North American continent, and it produced this arc of volcanoes on the western edge, and you can see Big Bend kind of located right in the middle of them. Uh, we also get some lacolithic intrusives that occur around 33 to 32 million years ago, and a lacolith is basically uh, the same thing as a pluton, which is a magma body up underneath the center, except the plutons are a lot bigger. Um, if you've got a weakness in the crust or rocks next to the magma body, the magma might shoot through the a weaker, uh, between the layers of a weak uh, layers of crustal rocks and dome up the rocks above it. And there's an interesting feature in the park called the Sierra Quemada Dome that was created this way. <clears throat> then we get into some basin and range faulting that occurs later um, from the in late tertiary. Uh, started around 25 million years ago, all the way up till just two, recently 2 million years ago. And this basically formed the Rio Grande Rift, um, and this uh, established the drainage channel for the now Rio Grande River. Um, there was also some locally formed uh, depositional basins as a result, because this, uh, the, the basin range faulting is, you know, crustal extension, and it formed a smaller basin that we call Bolsons, the Delaho Bolson, the Eustapha Bolson, and also some notable faults that are also in the park. Okay, I'll discuss some of the rock types a little bit in their spatial distribution inside that little red square we were looking at earlier. And here's that red square. We've got the Chizos Mountains right here, probably the most scenic area of the park. That's why I picked it. I can't do the whole park. There's not enough time. <laughs> but uh, here we can see in green, I've uh, highlighted the Cretaceous uh, limestones and sandstones that you can see outcropped. And later we see volcanic plastics they come in later during the tertiary, and you can see those uh, two different kinds that are also there. And uh, the rhyolites associated with the Chizos Mountains, um, right in here. And the later lacolithic and magma magmatic intrusives, all spotted along there where they can, you know, outcrop, you can see them all. And I've kind of overlaid them all together here where you can see it all together. Now the stuff that's not colored is just the eroded remnant of everything there, so it's fairly recent dusty rubble, stuff like that, filling in the basins. And here's a little, kind of a little movie I put together. I did this for a graduate class in ArcGIS, and uh, I'm a novice at it, so you can see some of the colors kind of pop in and out, but it kind of gives you an idea of the topography a little bit associated with, and coupled with where these rock types are located. Um, the little blue lines that you see there are the established roads that are also there. And you can see right in there, that's where a lot of campgrounds are located. I think a ranger station was located back over there. And I think the entrance to the park is coming up through here. And there's that Sierra Quemada Dome I was talking about just a little while ago, where you can see the concentric bands have been worn away, and you can actually see the concentric bands of the different rock types exposed. And here's some photographs from the park. This is uh, Santa Elena Canyon, and the Rio Grande River is actually flowing right through here. And you can see that this uh, Cretaceous rock, this is all limestone, this large block actually got eroded away or compromised, the, the structural integrity got compromised by the erosion of the Rio Grande, and this block dropped. And this is another neat little place in the park called Ernst Tanaha Canyon. Yes, it's Ernst Tanaha Canyon. And this is Bokeas limestone. You can actually see some of the folding from the tectonics right in here. But a Tanaha is a Spanish word that just means earth jug. And um, this is, canyon was pretty much formed by flash floods over eons of time, eroding the rock and causing eddies and swirling out and eating away these pockets. And here's a trip through, or going up into the Chizos Mountains, you can see them here, and the uh, Pine Canyon Caldera Complex I was talking about earlier is kind of back in behind there. <clears throat> and here you can see Santa Elena Canyon in the distance, and these in the foreground, those volcanic ash falls that, you know, volcanic ash fall the earth and solidifying in the rock that I was talking about earlier. So that's basically Big Bend National Park. You know, there's about almost half a billion years of earth history exposed in one place, and there's not, not a whole lot of places in the world that can boast that kind of repertoire. I highly recommend you put it on your bucket list. <laughs> Thank you.